everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Stitch Sessions. This week, we are all about the holiday season. They're coming up before you know it. So we are gonna be working on this really fabulous Christmas crochet stocking. It's worked from the cuff down which if you uh, checked out my stocking tutorial from last year, we worked from the toe up. So this is just another way that you can work a stocking. Now, it's not a project that takes very long, but in the process of filming, it ended up being quite uh, a long video. So we've cut this tutorial into two parts. And um, so we start with the cuff, we work down the leg, we take you through the heel, the foot, and then the toe at the end. And at the very end, if you like, you can add these cute little pom-pom uh, embellishments. And the stitch I used for this is a fabulous new stitch called the Artistic Single Crochet. And I discovered this from another fabulous crocheter's channel. Her name is Awana, O-A-N-A. -A. And uh, I'll put a link to her channel down below. She is fantastic. I've been following her for many years. She has an Italian channel as well as an English channel. And she's so creative and sweet and lovely and I love watching her. And she developed this stitch. So I thought I would use it in my uh, stocking tutorial. So uh, make sure to check out her channel, but also uh, hopefully you'll enjoy working on this. I had a ton of fun. It's a much larger stocking and you can fit a lot more stuff in here. And I'm using it as part of my decor. I've hung this on my uh, china cabinet here as part of my holiday decor as I get into the season. And you may recognize this guy over here. This is the all around wreath that we started back in October. And uh, we just uh, added a little um, holiday hat uh, ornament that we put on there a few tutorials ago. And I just added a little embellishment. Now, this is a pick, in case you're wondering. I know I'm a little off topic, but I know I'm gonna get some questions asking about this. This is a pick I got at Michael's, and you can, they come in individual uh, little sprigs, and I thought it would be a nice little add-on to uh, the wreath. So I'm all about getting into the holiday season right now, so I am looking forward to taking you through to this um, Christmas stocking tutorial. So let's get stitching. Let's grab our materials, and let's get going. Okay, so here's what we need to get started on our stocking. As always, you should have a pair of scissors on hand and a darning needle for later on sewing in any ends. Uh, you're gonna have your hook here and the hook that I'm using is an eight millimeter hook, also known as a size L or an 11. I'm using a hook this large because um, the yarn that I'm gonna use for the main body of the stocking is a little bit of a bulkier weight yarn. It is considered a bulky size five, and they do indeed recommend a size eight. Now for your stocking, I really recommend using at least two different colors. A contrasting color would be nice. So that way you kind of show definition from the cuff and the heel and the toe of your stocking. In my case, I've picked up this uh, really fun color, the Sparkle Lux from Loops and Threads. And uh, if you're curious, it is simply called gray. And I liked it because it had a little bit of sparkle to it. And I also liked it because it was on sale. So this uh, skein has 200 grams. I'm going to make this stocking a little bit larger. I know last year I did a stocking and I would call that kind of an average medium size stocking. This one's going to be a little bit larger. And for my contrasting color, I have actually this beautiful electric blue and that I had left over. I only used a little wee bit of it for another project and I've lost the label. I actually think it might be uh, the impeccable yarn, which I forget who does that. Uh, but anyway, so we're gonna use a little bit of this for the contrasting color. It is not a bulky weight. So this is something to take into consideration when you're picking your colors or different types of yarn. You, it is recommended that you use the same yarn weight for projects. However, it is not the end of the world. If you happen to have some leftovers, you want to use them up and they're not the same yarn weight. This is definitely a medium size four weight yarn. This is a bulky five. Not to worry. We're just using this for the trim and for accents. So it's not going to be a big deal to do this. And I'm going to talk a little bit more 
as we get into it, about uh, keeping things nice and relaxed when you're working with the medium four so that it kind of sits nicely with the bulky five weight. Okay, so these are all of our materials. So let's get stitching up our stocking. So in this particular project for the stocking, we are going to start from the cuff down. In a previous tutorial I did last year, we worked the stocking from the toe up. And there are a variety of different ways you can make a stocking. So this year I thought we'd tackle it from the cuff down. So that's what we're going to start with first. So for my cuff, I am actually going to do... I'm going to blend the two colors right away so that you have this kind of really cool striped effect. So as you can see, I've kind of pulled out the center of my blue just to have it ready here. So I'm just going to set that aside there. But I am going to start with my silver yarn or my gray yarn. So just found my center pull. Luckily, it was quite easy. I'm going to pull a bit of that out. Now, one thing, if you actually try and look for this specific yarn, I have a little tidbit to offer you is maybe not use this yarn if you are much more of a beginner crocheter. So, and I have a funny feeling that's probably why this was on sale because it came out kind of at the beginning of the fall and then it went on sale fairly soon after that. It's pretty, it's got a bit of sparkle in it. It's not the best for frogging. So if you make a mistake and try to pull it out, it tends to snag and not. So for an experienced crocheter and you have the patience, uh, I'm sure you can deal with it no problem. If you are a bit of a newer crocheter, this will frustrate you. So I would recommend finding another type of yarn. So you can see the fibers are really loose there and rough. In fact, let me have a quick look here. This is 70% polyester, 18% acrylic, and 12% metallic. So it just can be a little bit trying, like I'm having a bit of an issue here pulling the center because most likely it's caught on itself. Okay guys, so I'm back. I had to uh, fight a bit with this yarn. So it turns out something got snagged in the center and it's just, it's just not giving. So it's not worth it for me. So I found the outside end, which is right here, and I'm just going to work with it um, and unravel it as I go. So that is my experience with this yarn. But I know it's going to look amazing as a stocking. So here we go. So to begin, you're going to start with a slip knot. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off by chaining 12. And what you want to remember is keep your chain stitches nice and relaxed. See how I'm just making sure that there's a little bit of a gap there? That's what you want to do. Super, super relaxed. So you're going to chain 12. Once you've got your chain of 12, it'll look something like this. We're now going to chain one more. And then we're going to go into the second chain from the hook and we're just going to do a very relaxed slip stitch. So to slip stitch, you're going to insert yarn over and pull through that chain, but also pull through the loop on your hook. Now, this is what we're going to use to create a ribbed effect on our cuff and slip stitches generally sit quite snugly. So we, I want to emphasize you want to stitch this loosely. So see, it just keeping it super, super loose, especially because we, we're going to be mixing it with the size four yarn. So I'm going to insert again, pull it through, and then pull it through your original loop. Okay. One more time. I'm going to insert, pull it through, and continue to pull it through. So it's sitting very, very relaxed here. Okay, and you're going to do that all the way to the end, and you should still have 12 stitches at the end. Okay, and I have one more stitch here. Now remember that this at the very end is your slip knot, so don't confuse that with an actual stitch. Our last stitch is right in there. So I'm going to insert and I'm going to pull through, and that is my last slip stitch. 
So I still have 12 stitches. And see how nice that looks? Now, I went all the way through the end with this silver, but I'm actually now going to introduce my second color. Now, for those of you that are just going to do a solid cuff, like a solid color, um, you would just do exactly what I just did and then continue on with the next step. But because I am going to do mine in two colors, I'm just going to go back and show you that if you want to do it exactly how I'm doing it, this is what you're going to do just before you get into that last stitch. I'm going to introduce my new color, which is the electric blue. I realize it's a bit dark, uh, but I am trying to make sure that the lighting is good there. So I'm going to insert like I did before, but instead of picking up my silver, I am going to just leave that there. I'm going to pick up my blue and that is what I'm going to feed through when I slip stitch to join. So I pull it through there and I pull it through here. And then here, I can just a little wee bit, just snuggle that stitch in. I just pulled it there, okay? And then what I'm going to do, just to kind of keep it going, is see what I did with this tail? Just kind of dropped it in there and pulled this one up. I'm going to use the blue. Sorry, guys. I hope this isn't going to confuse you. So I've got this blue tail and I've got my silver left over here. Now I've got my blue that I'm working with. I'm not going to cut my yarn because I'm going to continue to come back to that silver. So I'm just going to take the short tail and the silver and I'm just going to flip it over. So now I'm, I'm working with my blue yarn, but see how it's going to trap it in there? And I'm going to chain one. Super loose, remember, because this is a lot thinner. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work. Now what I want to do is I just want to look at my stitches. So see, because it's a slip stitch, it would be easy to think we're working into here. Okay, this is the back of our work. So make sure that you can see the front of your work right there. Once you do a few more rows, it will make, um, it, will make it a little easier to see. So I've chained one. And now what I want to do is I want to go into this very next stitch here. That will count as one. And I'm going to go into the back loop. So see, the front loop is the one closest to you. This loop is the one furthest away. And this is why it was so important to keep it loose. So that way it makes it easier for you to sneak your hook through. Now, most especially with this one, because it's a thinner yarn, keep it relaxed when you're pulling it through, see, and pulling it through super loose, okay? I'm going to go into the next loop, back loop, Pull that through and continue to pull it through, keeping it very relaxed. And that's what you're going to do all the way to the end of this row. So this is now row two of your cuff. So we don't count the uh, single crochet row as a row yet. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end of my row and your work is gonna start kind of feeling bulky. Like you probably are gonna go, I don't even know which way is the front. Don't panic, I'm gonna take you through that. So I've made sure that I have 11 so far, including that chain one at the end because I still have one more here. So this one may get a little bit tricky to see because that's our chain one when we came around. That extra chain we did, so when we chain 12 at the beginning, and we chain one more, that counts as a stitch. So that's why, again, keeping it loose, you'll be able to find it. So I'm just gonna find that loop there. I'm gonna snuggle my hook through and yarn it over and pull through two, okay? So now I'm gonna turn my work. Sorry, I'm gonna chain one, turn my work. And so each color is gonna get two rows, okay? So I'm still using the blue. And if you did a decent job of keeping it nice and loose, you should be able to fit your eight millimeter hook into those stitches now, okay? So I'm gonna take you through that. So we've chained one. That's gonna count as one. So we're gonna go into this next stitch here. And we're just gonna slip stitch. 
And again, you want to keep this super loose because next we're going to bring back our bulky yarn and we want to make sure it can comfortably get in there. So there's one. This is the front loop. That's the back loop. Okay. I want to go in through the back loop. So I'm just, so just think of it as going down in the center of the stitch from the top. And then I'll pull through. See, I just pull it up because I want it to stay really loosey goosey. Okay. So, front loop, I'm going to go in through the back loop. So, I'm just going to help it along there. And just like that. Okay. So, I'm going to do that all the way to the end and then we're going to pick up back with our silver. So just into the back loop, take your time and I'll meet you there. And we're coming up to the end of row three and now it's starting to look like this and we're ready to reintroduce our silver. So we've got one more stitch left here which is that chain one. So we're just going to insert into that nice loose loop there. And instead of picking up the blue to slip stitch, we're going to bring back the silver. And I always try and put the color that I'm working, just finishing with, putting it down. And so it's going to get trapped with the new color. And that's a nice, easy way to keep carrying the yarn. Okay. So then I pick up my silver and I'm going to slip stitch it through the loop and through the working loop. Okay. That is the end of row three. I still have my 12 stitches there. So then I will very loosely chain one, turn my work, and we're going to continue on as usual. Okay. So just keep in mind, you never count the loop on the hook and you're going to skip two. So you've got this chain one, then you skip that loop. Because remember, the chain one counts as a single, uh, sorry, the chain one counts for a stitch. And we're going to go into this third one here. So that's how you're always going to start um, a new row. So I'm just positioning it so hopefully you can see um, where the loops are sitting. So we've got one here, two, and this is the third one. That's the one we're going to go into. So you're just going to insert your hook and see, I, I, stitched very loosely. So that's why it was easy to insert that hook and pull through and then pull through again. So these are all slip stitches we're using here. I know some people um, sometimes will use single crochets and work in the back loops only and you can certainly do that as well, which I have done in many other projects. But for this one, I wanted to kind of show you different options. So we're using slip stitches. Okay, so this is now the beginning of row four. And then you're going to, when you get to the end, you're going to chain one, turn around, and row five will be the same color. So basically, each color will always get two rows, and that's because we want to come back to the end here and pick up our next color. So I will leave you here because the rest is a repeat. And uh, then you're going to get this really funky ribbed effect here. Okay. Now what you want to do is work up however many rows that you would like, depending on how wide you would like your uh, stocking to be. So I'm going to make mine a little larger and because I've made my cu cuff a little larger, I'm going to make mine quite wide. So however wide you like the opening to be, you're going to have to double that length. So for me, I would like my stocking to be about, mm, I would say seven inches in width. And so my 12 inches of cuff, sorry, my 12 stitches is giving me four uh, inches in height. So I would like uh, probably, let's say, yeah, I think I'm going to double the width. So I've got four inches in height for my cuff. 
and I'm gonna you get eight inches across in width. So that means that I need to um, build up my work until I have 16 inches. Why? Because the cuff is gonna go around the front, eight inches, and then loop around the back. So, and then eventually we're gonna work in the round. So you're gonna do, if you're following exactly the same pattern I'm doing, and I want my opening to be eight inches, you're gonna keep going and do rows and rows and rows until you get your 16 inches. Now I'll let you know at the end how many rows it was for me. It will be different for you depending on the weight of yarn and how loosely you are stitching, right? So if I do something like 100 rows, let's say, you may have only used 90 rows if you're a little bit of a much looser stitcher or if you had yarn that's even bulkier than the one that I'm using. You may end up having 125 or 150 rows if you are a tight crocheter, okay? So keep that in mind. For now, I'm gonna set you loose. You're gonna do your cuff and then I will meet you back up when we are ready to close up our cuff and start working down the leg portion of our stocking. Okay, everyone, so I now have my 16 inches done here. And so my work is looking like this. And so there is an obvious back to me anyway. You may like this um, ridged effect from the slip stitches, but I prefer this side, which I think most people would agree is the front, so that you can see the stitching of each color nice and solidly. And I love this effect because it, it's got this knit type of look. And you can see on the side here, this is the side where we carried our yarn. Now it's got a cool little, um, spiral effect. So you may want to keep that um, when you close up your your stocking. I think I'm going to uh, stitch over this. I'm going to hide that. So now what you want to do, in my last row here, I only did the first row in the blue of the slip stitches because I'm going to use my second row to actually seal up our um, our stocking here. So this is the cuff of our stocking. So when you fold it over, it looks like that. So the outside is facing out. And I've still got, whoops, I've still got my uh, silver attached because that is the color I'm going to continue on with for the leg part of the stocking. So here's what we're going to do. And in fact, you may want to get a slightly smaller hook. So I've been using the eight millimeter hook. Um, but I think I'm just going to go down to a six and a half just to do this um, slip stitching here to seal up our cuff. So, so I have my trusty 6.5 millimeter hook, also known as a K or a 10 and a half. You don't have to do this, but I find when you're doing things like sealing up sides, sometimes going down a hook size really helps. So here we go. That's better. So I have my blue side that's done one row. So I have my blue here. I'm just going to insert my hook. Whoops. And it's on the other side because I've got my right side facing out. So what I want to do is I want to match up each stitch per stitch on each side here. So now you'll notice actually that your first row probably has a little nub hanging out there. And that's because when you're first starting, a lot of times your stitching may be looser or tighter. I mean, it's up to you. But for me, I tend to do a bit looser at the top. And this is super fine with me because I'm going to use this as the little hook part to create the, uh, the loop so that you can hang your stocking on. So I'm not going to go right away into this first one. Um, so it's a little thicker when you're first starting to do the uh, the back loops only slip stitch. So what I want to do is I want to identify which part is the front. So this one here, if I just squeeze these, so I can see this row here is the front. And then this is now the back. So there's some V's along the top and V's along the front 
I'm going to work into these V's along the top, okay? So I'm just going to leave this little guy alone here. I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to go right away into this one. And hopefully you're going to end up with a perfect match. Sometimes you're one off. It's not a big deal. Um, we can always fix that. So I'm going to insert my hook here and now I'm going to pick up my blue yarn. And what I want to do is simply pull that blue yarn through. And now the two sides are together. And now I'm just going to go right into the very next stitch, which is right beside it, into that back loop there. And then I want to find the front loop of this next stitch. Okay, so then I'm going to pull that through and pull it through again. Okay, so again, going into the very next stitch right there. And then I just follow through in the front loop. Remember, that's the loop closest to you. See, because the back loop is back there. And I'm just going to pull through. Okay, so you will have a little bit of the silver showing through, but um, again, this will be the seam, so we're not going to be too worried about it. And that's what handmade things are. They're art, right? So the beauty sometimes is in the imperfections. So hopefully you can see the gist of what we're doing here now. Every single stitch, you just insert back loop here, and then the front loop of the corresponding side. Okay, I'm just going to pull it here. So you can see now when you open it up like that, that the blue kind of will start to snuggle in next to the other. You'll have that very thin little silver line going down there, but I am pretty happy with that. So you're going to go all the way down to the end. Now you may have something like this happen. Sometimes what you want to do just to even things out, if you see that one side is um, ending up longer than the other. And again, remember that we have a medium four against a bulky five or six, I think we're working with. Can't even remember. Um, that's, that's bound to happen. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll insert into this one and go back into the other one we just worked. Okay. So see that one there? We just worked that one, but we're going to go back in again. So we're slip stitching two into one. And that just kind of pulls it up a little bit. See, it's already starting to match up. And then I just continue on my merry way, going into the next one, and then into the next stitch in the front loops. Whoops, did that split? It did. There we go. And pull through. Okay. So, you know, just use your little... Um, so, you know, just use your own methods to make sure that everything evens out. So go ahead and continue finishing your seam and then I'm going to meet you here and we're going to then change off to our silver and now start the leg of our stocking. Okay, so I'm just coming up to my last stitch here and now I want to make sure that I kind of bring in my silver again, okay, because it's a little bit behind there. So. I'm going to insert, so I'm going to insert into that last stitch I have here on this side. You're going to see you're going to meet up with your tails here. We're going to work over those in a second. You're going to insert there, and I'm going to find my last stitch somewhere around here. I'm going to insert through here. And I'm actually going to pull through, notice I'm picking up my silver, I'm going to pull through both the blue and the silver. And this is just something I like to do to kind of bring everything all together. So now they're together, just pull that out. And you can see that now we've seamed up our cuff. So now we are, will be working in the round. Okay, so normally the stocking will sit like that. So that seam will sit right on the corner there. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to cut off our blue. 
So we're going to be done with that for a little while. And then we want to just actually, I'm going to pull that through. Oops. Where's my tail? Yeah, this is the tail I just cut off. I'm going to pull that through this guy here. And then I'm just going to pull it out. And what that does is that'll knot the blue down. It helps me keep my silver going. Okay, so I know there's a lot going on here. We've got all these tails happening. So you, I'm going to leave it up to you. You can just leave these aside and then weave them in afterwards if you find them a bit bulky to work with. Or you can just work over them. I usually try to work over them. But what I was thinking is there's a lot of bulk here. So this time around, I think I'm just going to leave these tails down here and I'm going to wait till I work my first row and then I'm going to weave them in just to keep things neat and tidy around the cuff. So here we go. Now, because we've worked slip stitches into the back loops, these are quite snuggled in here. So Every time you see a color, it looks like there's one row of silver, one row of blue, et cetera, et cetera. There's actually two rows, because remember, we slip stitched in the back loop. So it takes about two rows before you see this nice effect. Um, slip stitches are a lot shorter than a uh, single crochet. So a lot of times into the side of a single crochet, we would do one stitch. And so that's exactly what we're doing now. Because our work is now being turned this way, we are working into the sides of our stitches. So I'm going to work into the end of each color. Okay, so I'm gonna now count these colors as a row. Um, so however many times your colors change, that's how many rows you're gonna have. And we're just gonna do simple single crochets. So you'll chain one here. And then what we're going to do, I'm just going to leave those tails aside here. I'm going to go right into the top of my first color row, which is the silver, and I'm just going to find a nice spot. So there's a spot right there. So I want to go right into there, and you may have to fiddle with it. There we go. It's in the silver portion. So I'll yarn over, pull through, and then just kind of stretch it up a little bit so that they're equal in height. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through two. So see, now you've got the silver at the top of the silver. Now we're going to go into the top of the blue. Okay, and You can see I like to use where the stitches are naturally forming. So this on the side, these are mostly the chain ones where we change colors. I'm going to dip down and insert my hook into that first full stitch. Yarn over and pull through. Now this is why I want you to kind of just stretch it up a little bit so that it stays relaxed. You don't want it bunching in, right? Yarn over and then pull through like a regular single crochet. Beautiful. So now you're going to have a stitch coming out of the top of each color change. So I'm going to do that again. We're now going to go into the silver. So sometimes people would go up here, which is absolutely fine. I'm choosing to dip down a little lower. And for me, I just feel like that's going to give a little bit more color uniformity in my work. And again, I just stretched that up very relaxed and resolved a single crochet. All right. And again, one more time into the next one. So I'm going to go right down here and through and then pull through two. Beautiful. And that's exactly what we want. So eventually, your cuff, sorry, your, your stocking is going to look this way facing down. So this is where the silver is now going to take over. And I'm actually pretty happy with that. Again, keep this loose. If you, if you stitch tight, it will kind of cinch in. And for a stocking, you want it to have a bit of give and you're going to be putting things in there and you want the stocking to stretch. So you don't want it to be tight at the top. So hopefully this all makes sense to you. And I'm going to set you loose now to do this all the way around till you come back to the beginning. And then we're going to talk about this really cool stitch we're going to use um, to create the leg of our stocking. So I'll meet you back here in a few.
Okay, guys, so I'm coming up to my very last stitch here in the round. So I'm just going to insert, oops, and pull through, and then resolve. Okay, and I'm really happy with how that looks. So if you just turn that like that, gorgeous. And actually, you may have noticed that I just continued working in with the six and a half millimeter hook. And the funny thing is I'm kind of liking it. So again, I can control my gauge. So I think what I'm going to do is continue on using the six and a half millimeter hook. So if you guys are tight crocheters, definitely go back to your eight. Okay. So, um, Let's see what will happen here. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do here is we're going to join our round. So remember our first one right there? So what we wanna do is actually just ignore this right here and go right in the top of our first single crochet and slip stitch to join. See that? Just creates a nice little uniform join. Just gonna keep that there like that. So now we're gonna go on to doing this a fabulous cool stitch that I've seen on one of the channels that I follow. So it's a stitch that was developed by lady, uh, a lady named Oana. And she's also got a fabulous crochet channel and I'll uh, leave a link in the description box down below as well as somewhere up here in the cards. And she actually, I believe she's based in Italy, but she has an English channel as well as a, an Italian channel. And she developed this stitch that she calls the artistic single crochet. And it just creates this lovely, lovely texture and I thought we should try it out. So we're gonna begin by chaining one and then you're going to go back into the same stitch we just slip stitched out of, but we're going to do one half double crochet to begin. Okay, just to get us started. So you'll yarn over, insert your hook, get rid of that tail there, yarn over and pull through, keeping it again nice and relaxed. And then you have three loops on the hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all three. You do not want to be tight with this. I can't stress this enough. You need to have a relaxed gauge. Okay, guys. So now here's where the artistic single crochet is going to come in. So what's going to happen? See how the um, stitch creates these three little uh, strands here coming across? We are going to insert our hook into the bottom front strand there. See that? We're going to insert there, yarn over to pull through. Then we're going to go into our next stitch, into the full stitch now, yarn over and pull through, again, keeping it relaxed. And then we'll yarn over and pull through all three. Okay? So it's just giving a little bit of, um, I guess a bit of chunkiness to it and it's actually snuggling the stitches nicely together. So we're going to do that again. So see how it creates a little wrap around here and there's three strands. So we always insert into the bottom strand first, yarn over to pull through. So you have two loops. See how loose I am? Then, whoops, then I'm going to insert into the very next stitch, which is the stitch we're working into, yarn over to pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. So you're kind of always carrying over the previous stitch to sit. I just love that. Just love how that makes them sit nice and close together, especially for something like a stocking. Now she made a hat in her tutorial, um, but she'll tell you, you can do hats, scarves, blankets. And I think it's just a fabulous, wonderful, amazing stitch. And again, I adore watching her. She's absolutely uh, so sweet and really does a lot of great work. So you should definitely check her out. In the meantime, let's keep going with our stocking. I'm going to do this one more time. So we've got our three loops here. So I'm going to just insert there in that third strand, yarn over to pull through, and then I'm going to insert again, yarn over, and then I'm going to pull through all three. And 
if I just pull that out, as we continue to work down, I am really liking that. And I'm liking the fact that I've switched over to the six and a half. So I think I'm going to continue on with the six and a half millimeter hook. So continue on your way. So you're going to continue all the way around and then I'm going to meet you here and we're going to talk about how we are going to join and continue for the rest of the leg. All right, so here we are. Look at how nice that's coming out. I'm down to my last stitch that I've worked. Now, be careful because a lot of times people would think this is the last stitch, but really this is the stitch where our chain one came out of. So we, a lot of times we call that the false stitch. So don't be fooled into thinking, I mean, you can work into it, but what happens is it's going to give you an extra stitch in your round and then your work is going to start to fan out, which we do not want. And by the way, I forgot to mention to you guys, if you're following exactly uh, my size, I ended up now having 42 stitches around. So I ended up having four rows of solid color, uh, sorry, 42 rows of solid colors. So when I single crocheted into the top of each row, that now gives me 42 stitches. So uh, it's good to know your count and uh, keep track of that. So we are now going to slip stitch to join. Okay, so we're just gonna go into the top of that first stitch there. Which is right here, right? Because we're not gonna count this chain one for this project. So you're gonna slip stitch to join. And the reason why we're doing that, a lot of times we'd work in the round uh, a lot of stockings do slip stitch to join. And so what happens every time you join, your stitch always sits to the right. And so when you're working in the round, your front is always facing the same way. And then eventually that stitch kind of moves over and over and over. So you, you'll have this seam that goes in a diagonal. So in order to keep our seam straight on the back edge of our stocking, what we're going to do is every row you've come to every round, sorry, you come to the end, you're going to slip stitch to join. We'll chain one, and now we're going to turn our work. So you're actually going to be working with the inside facing you, okay? And then we'll begin as we did before. You've chained one, and now you're going to half double crochet first into that same stitch. Remember to keep it loose. You need to be a loose stitcher for this particular stitch. Whoops. And don't split your yarn. Okay, and then you just continue on as usual. You go into that bottom strand or bottom loop there, pull through, and then go right into the stitch next to it. And then you're gonna continue on as usual. And my yarn here tends to split a lot, so I just have to be very conscientious of it. Okay. And you're just going to continue your stitch as always. And so you're going to go around, 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 and you're going to, when you come back to where we started, remember that this is a false stitch. So you're going to slip stitch to join right here. And then you're going to chain one and turn your work so you'll be facing the front again. Okay? So you're going to have to turn your work for this project. And then that will help to keep our seam See, it's going to help keep your seam right in that back corner there, okay? Now see what's happening here? I'm starting to get too relaxed and chain um, and stitch tighter. So if you have gone down to the six and a half mil millimeter hook and I start seeing this, then what I would probably do is every other row is I would just change back to my eight millimeter hook. And the reason why I would do a flip back and forth is sometimes you're working on a project and then you just kind of lose sight or you get a little bit tired and it's easy to start crunching your stitches. Now I myself will just undo this uh, and redo it again a little bit looser, but this is the thing when you move down such a big gap in, um, in hook size, right? So we started with an eight, then we used a six and a half to stitch up our side and do our single crochets. So it is a big chunk, right? So I kind of did this as an experiment and I can tell that I'm probably going to get tired back and forth. So 
I am most likely going to uh, change my hook every other round. Now, a lot of people, especially experienced crocheters, would say, wow, that's really way too much work for me. And they would just stick with their eight millimeter hook. And you know what? I think that's a great idea. You should go ahead and do that. Whatever is easier for you. For me, I like to make things more challenging for myself. So that is what I'm going to do. All right, guys, I did a lot of talking. Hopefully you can figure out we're going to continue around. Slip stitch, chain one, turn your work. And you're going to do this for until you reach about, I would say, 10 inches. So once you've got 10 inches in length, I'm going to meet back up with you here. Okay, and then we'll talk about starting the heel of our stocking.